Hello everyone, and today we're going to build an app for the Pico Neo 2. So first, we have to take a look at a few things. Number one, Unity. So we're going to create a new project, and I'm going to be using version 2020.3.3F1. Unity officially supports anything above 2019.4, so you should be good with most Unity versions. And I just want to remind you that it's a really good idea. No, it's not a really good idea. It's required that you and your group, when you're working on a team project, agree on which version of Unity and make sure everyone is exactly using the same. So I'm going to go ahead with 2020.3. I'm going to create a new project. And I'm actually going to create a new project using what's called a universal render pipeline, uh, which is Unity's most lightweight rendering system. So I'm going to call this the Pico test project number two, because you're because I already have a number one. And I am going to put it in a folder here. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit create. So now Unity is going to create a bunch of files and create a session. And while it's doing this, we have to go to get a few things. So number one, we need to get the actual documentation and the package from from Pico. So I'm gonna just find here Pico VR. <clears throat> and let's get to its website. And I see here for developers, developer tools. Uh, you might want to do create a register as a developer, but I don't believe you necessarily need this. Let's just try to SDK download. And here we see Unity X S that Unity XR platform. And I'm going to click download. And if you click agree, it's going to download a zip file. I already have it download. Well, actually, I'm going to download it again. So, and over here we have the documentation. So I also, I really like to have this open. And there's normally in every documentation, if this is your first time following documentation, there's always an introduction or getting started page. And normally, if you just follow this step by step, you have a working project. So let's take a look at Unity over here for a second. Um, we have here a bunch of files and a bunch of folders, and I like to get rid of everything. So I'm going to select everything in my hierarchy and hit delete. And I'm going to select everything in my project folder and hit delete. And that takes a little bit of time. And I'm going to create a folder for my scenes. And I'm going to create an empty scene over here. And I call them main. And I'm going to open the scene and not save the previous one. Okay, so we have an empty Unity project. The first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the package manager. So the package manager is where we can import a bunch of libraries into Unity and they appear over here at this package folder. And we're going to use an, a number of different libraries in order to use the Pico device. So the first thing I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to go over here to edit and then project settings and then package manager and no, preset manager, package manager. And I'm gonna click on this button here that says enable preview packages. And you have to understand something. So I do this because the main package that we're gonna be using is still in preview mode, but it actually works really well. And it's called uh, the XR interaction toolkit. And this is Unity's library of code that is built to make it easier to to use to develop for virtual reality. So I'm just going to click install in the package manager and it's going to install a bunch of files and download a bunch of things. Um, and that is good. And while we're doing this, I'm going to take a quick look at this file we just downloaded uh, from the Pico website. And it's a zip file with a bunch of information. So I'm going to navigate extract this folder over here into a new folder. And we are going to hit yes. What's going on in Unity? And now we're going to add that as a package. Oh, Unity has to sort of restart sometimes when you install an application. So that's what we're doing. So now we have the package manager open again. And we are going to click on the plus button and add a package from disk. 
And if we go to the folder that we on that we just downloaded from the Pico website and we open it, we're going to see this package.json file. And you're going to click open on it. And what that package does is just a, a text file that includes information about how to install and where all the right folders should be installed into your Unity project. And these are the files that Pico are going to give us uh, in order to develop. So once you do that, it's going to open this page over here. And it's going to give you some information. It's actually going to give you links as well. But the, the main thing we need to look out for is this number two here, use entitlement check. Entitlement is what, when you put an application into a store, it's the way that you can verify that the person actually bought that application, if it's entitled to it. And we're not going to deal with that right now because that requires you having an account with Pico, making sure and that you've submitted your application for them. But we just want to sideload your app into it. So we're going to set that off and click apply. Now, when we installed Unity, if you've been going through uh, the Unity tutorial that you, yeah, you should be, have gone, this is probably week two for you right now. So I, you may have been asked to install Android build module. And you can do that over here at the Unity Hub. So when you're installing your versions of Unity, uh, you can actually click on Add Modules and you have to select the Android build support. And this is because Pico is an Android device and we're gonna need to use the Android build tools. So if you didn't do this, it's not too late. You can actually go ahead and click on that button. Make sure to close Unity before you do this and hit continue and it's going to install that uh, the Android build platforms. The other thing, so th this is complete. And uh, the other thing you need to make sure is that when you click file and build settings, that you are on the Android build. So you can, if you click different build platforms and I have many installed over here and you click to switch platform, it's going to switch that build platform. And so since we're using Android, I recommend you clicking here and then you click on the sw switch platform. So now that we've installed that package, uh, we have everything we need. So first things first, we're going to go to edit, then project settings, and we're gonna go to player. Where is the player? Player. So here's where you put your company name. I'm gonna put it in my cool XR. Uh, the project name is over here. And the, the product name is over here. And here we have the version. Uh, this is where we have multiple information about how we're going to build this application. So we're going to change a few settings over here that are important. Uh, the number one thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the color space from linear to gamma. And as you can see over here in the player settings, you can have actually different settings for different build platforms. So this is WebVR, this is PC, and this would be Android. So it's important that when you're doing these changes, you're going to be doing them under the Android settings. Um, let's let this progress bar go through. Now that we've done this, we're going to change our graphics API. So these are the instructions that your build is going to ask from the, uh, com the visual processor of your device, the, your GPU. And uh, there are multiple standards for it. And Pico does not support this one called Vulkan. Uh, at the moment, I find it likely that it will support because it's becoming more and more of a standard. So we're going to minus that option. And we're actually going to open and uh, add another option, which is the OpenGL um, ES2. So let's go through this bar again. Okay, so now we're going to add the OpenGL ES2. And we're going to see another waiting bar. One thing to keep in mind is every time you're setting up a project, you're going to want to make sure there's plenty of time for you to wait for a lot of loading screens because it's normally how it goes. Okay, so now that we've changed our graphics API, we're going to go down all the way where we see here uh, the minimum API level, and we're going to set that to 26. So Android 8, and our target API level is going to be 29, API le level 29, which is Android 10.0. Then we're going to change the scripting backend from mono to IL to CPP, and that means intermediate language, which is C sharp, to C++. And this is simply how Unity is going to compile all the code 
that it's generated in the editor when you build the application. So we're going to take a quick look down over here to make sure that we have everything set up and that's everything we need to set on the player. Now we're going to go to this XR plugin management. And once you click over here, we're going to set up which is the plugin that we're going to be using to inform Unity what is the input of as you know the head position and all this information from the Pico device and what to send back as an output. So we're going to click on this Pico XR, which is only here because we installed that package. And if we go to the Pico XR, we see we have a few set settings. And we are going to let leave this on its default settings. Actually, I'm going to change the stereo rendering mode from. Uh, no, never mind. I'm going to keep it as it is. <laughs> okay. So now we can close this. And I actually, no, we're, we're all good. I'm going to remove the camera and we're going to simply build um, a version of a, a quick project that has a plane and you can sort of see your hands in it. So I'm going to right click in the hierarchy and create first a plane for our floor. I'm going to set this in meters to 10, 10 and 10 meters. It's a pretty large space. I'm going to right click over here and click on XR and then we're going to find here XR rig action based. I'm going to click that up. So we're going to find the XR rig and we're going to add the PXR underscore manager. And this is just how Pico sort of sets things up for when you open this project in it. So I'm going to just over here on the tracking origin mode on XR rig, I'm going to set it to floor and this specifies where your head is calculated, it calculates its height relative to something. And uh, we're going to open the XR rig and the camera offset. And here is your left and right controllers. And this is your main camera. As you can see, your main camera should be set up over here properly, meaning the, the track pose driver, which if you've gone through the tutorial, you should know by now it's, you know, which input information Unity is using to track the position of this game object, which is the main camera. This should be set up. But if you look at the left and right controllers, you see that the position and rotation are not set up. So we're going to do that manually. First, we'll start with the left controller under the position action and user reference. We're going to click on the plus and add a binding. And now if we double click here, we're going to be able to set what do we want to use as our input here. And we're going to go to the XR controller, the left hand, and over here we have device position. That's great. So now we're going to do the same for rotation. Add binding, double click, open here, XR controller, and device rotation. Uh, you can actually set up other buttons over here. So these are the actions that we're going to use later down the line. But I'm not going to do that right now because we're just testing things. We're going to go to the right controller and I'm going to do the same but for the right controller. So now in order to see our hands and make sure everything is working, I'm going to add a little cube inside each of these game objects. And I'm going to set it to one centimeter or 10 centimeters, just 0.1. And I'm going to duplicate and put it under the right controller as well, making sure it's on the 0, 0, 0 position. Okay, so now we should be all set. If you get some errors, this can happen when you're importing packages. If you know some files that have dependencies are important before the other ones, you may get some console errors, but you don't have to worry about this too much. So I'm going to click save to save the scene. And I'm going to go to build settings and I'm going to remove this scene that we deleted when we opened the project. I'm going to add the open scenes. And it's important every time you're building to make sure that the scenes that you've created and saved are, are in this list. Now, we are going to simply build the project. But before we do this, uh, I want to make sure that you're set up correctly on your Unity. So if you go to Edit and then Preferences, and then you go to External Tools, this is where Unity sets up, you know, which scripting as editor you're going to be using, your IDE, and things like wh where, you know, the information about your Android library is, and all of the different things it needs in order to build for Android. 
And you notice here, it, yours should probably look like this, meaning that it will install for you all of the recommended Android settings. And this can sometimes break. So if you're getting build errors that are talking about JDK or SDK, this is what I want you to do. I want you to first go to the go to Google and look for Android. Uh, what's it called? Android Studio. And you're going to download Android Studio for the operating system that you're using, be it Windows or Mac. Then once you download and installed it, you're going to open this Android Studio which is normally how people build Android applications if they're not using Unity. I'm gonna click on File, and we're gonna to go to Settings. And over here, under Application and Behavior, System Settings, and Android SDK, you're gonna check everything from Android 5.0 to Android uh, 9. I actually have to, uh, to Android uh, version 11, sorry, to version 29. And you're gonna check this check mark, then, click apply, then you go to the SDK tools and make sure that NDK is also checked. And you're gonna click apply. And this is going to download all the latest uh, Android build information libraries and install them in your computer. So once you're done with this, you're gonna copy this file path. And we're gonna bring this to Unity and we're gonna deselect the Android SDK path and we're gonna paste what we got from the Android Studio over here. And what that does is it's gonna tell Unity, instead of using you know, the files that you downloaded yourself for the building Android programs, actually use the ones that we got from Android Studio. They're likely going to be more up to date, so you're less likely to encounter an error if you do this. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit build. And we may get an error if I did something wrong which is actually pretty common. So let's see what happens. Uh, build test two. And over here, oh, it's asking about entitlement check. Remember we selected to not have entitlement check. Um, I just wanna make sure that we are right sure about not using it. So I'm gonna go, yes, ignore, I don't, I don't, and don't remind me again. So now you're gonna have a probably longer build time over here, but that should come out with no errors. Okay, and it looks like it built without any errors, which is great. So now, how do we put this in the app? Well, one little trick is, if you actually have your device connected to your PC, you can actually probably find it over here in Pickle Neo 2. And if you click Build and Run, it's not only gonna build, but it's going to install the APK. But I also want you to be familiar with how to install APKs into the Pickle device outside of the Unity environment. So the best tool for doing this is something called SideQuest. And uh, what SideQuest is, is a application that helps you install and download contents into your Android-based virtual reality headsets. So I actually wanted the Google page, SideQuest, over here. And there should be, a if we do download, you should find very easily a link for downloading uh, SideQuest. I already have it installed. So if I open it here, all I need to do is connect my Pico device to my computer and it should detect over here, Pico Neo 2. And if you click on install APK from folder or computer, I should be able to navigate very easily to the build that I just created. Over here, Pico test 2. And if I hit open, it will install the APK. And that should, it should be it. If you go to your Pico device now, you should be able to find the application that you just built and uh, run it and everything should be working fine. Um, I hope this was useful. I hope that it worked well. And if it didn't, make sure to let me know and we can probably support you. And uh, good luck.